Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we are going to discuss the next topic in the financial literacy power series. Today's topic is going to be retirement accounts. Now I hope this is not foreign to you guys because I would hope that you are saving for your financial future. So I'm going to discuss the, the main um, retirement accounts that most people use. Now, these accounts have a lot of information. I'm only going to touch on general information, what's common, and you guys have to decide which one is best for you. But of course, that will require you to do a little bit more research because there are IRS implications, tax implications, things like that. So depending upon your specific financial situation, you know, one might do better than the other or you can have more than one. So let's get started. So the first one I'm going to discuss is the 401k, which is the most common and it's usually the easiest. In most cases, people enroll in the 401k through their employer. And as you change jobs, you are able to roll forward your 401k to your, you know, your next employer. Also, the deductions happen pre-tax. So, you know, there's a little bit of savings there and normally companies tend to match. So for example, my company matches up to 6%. So in that case, I'm not going to contribute less than 6%. So my recommendation to you guys is if you do have a 401k or if you're thinking about contributing to a 401k, you should at least contribute up until, up until your employers match. Then also as you get, you know, raise increases, it'd be a good you know, a good practice to put into play to increase your contribution percentage as your pay increases. Also similar to the 401k is the 403b and it really, there isn't really much difference from between that and the 401k except for the 403b, um, it's usually for teachers and employees that work in the non-for-profit sector. So when you first onboard into a job, normally you get a benefits package. So you want to go through and see what type of retirement options are provided for you because you definitely want to have something working for you. In, in, in essence, it's a type of passive income savings account because you don't have to do much to get it. You know what I mean? You're working, of course, but each paycheck, the money is deducted automatically and it goes into the, into the uh, retirement savings account. Now, as far as the investments that you should choose, that's a whole nother topic in itself. If you guys are curious or interested in diving that deep, we definitely can discuss, but let me know. Next you have IRA accounts. So there's two types of IRA accounts. There's traditional and then there's the Roth IRA. So first we're going to go through the traditional IRA. So with the traditional IRA, you can contribute up to 5,500 a year and 6,500 if you're over 59 and a half. Now there are income requirements in regards to the deductions that you can take on your IRA contributions when you file your taxes. So you have to look into what that um, requirement is based on your filing status, whether it's single, married, filing jointly, married, filing separately, had a household, et cetera, et cetera. So one of the main differences between the traditional and the Roth IRA is that with the traditional, you are taxed when you withdraw the money. So your contributions aren't taxed, but once you get to the age where you can start to withdraw from the account, those withdrawals are taxed. Now switching to the Roth IRA, when you withdraw money from your retirement account, you are not taxed on those withdrawals. But the drawback to the Roth IRA is that as you continue to make more money, there is a ceiling as far as what you can contribute or if you can contribute once you hit that ceiling. So you'll have to pay attention to those type of, um, of requirements. And the withdrawal age for the Roth is 59 and a half as well. Now a positive to the Roth, well, you know what? I don't know if I consider this a positive because there, the Roth IRA has where you can withdraw money before you are 59 and a half and it is not taxed but it's only up until the amount that you yourself actually contributed so not the interest or whatever was earned on the money that you contributed only what you contributed so if you let's say contributed a thousand but your account has grown to two thousand you know due to investments you can only withdraw the one thousand for i mean without being taxed 
my only co concern is with that is that once people start to know that it's easy to withdraw you might not leave the money sitting there long term and the point of the account is to save for your financial future and you know interest compounds and you earn you know you're earning on top of what you contributed but if you're steady in and out of the account I mean you know what I mean like it's kind of common sense you're not gonna earn much because the money isn't really sitting it it isn't growing so you might want to consider that I know some people decide to dip into their 401ks for like um, uh, school reasons like to pay for their children to go to college or um, home improvements um, to buy homes like as far as down payments but I challenge you to not consider that as a savings account where you can just dip in and out of or as like a first choice when it's like do you have any money saved oh I have my retirement account Eh, that ain't the one that you that you know what I mean it's for emergencies and things of that nature that's why you have separate savings a separate cushion emergency fund not this and my previous video I talked about how to build an emergency fund so if you don't know what that is or if you don't know how to get started with that check that out so guys that is it for the second video in the financial literacy power series I think it was pretty short I'm trying to keep it short and sweet so that you guys can stay engaged let me know if you'd like more details and as I usually mention, you can check out yourlifeandfinance.com for detailed information in regards to different you know personal finance tips and tricks but if you do have any specific questions, let me know in the comments down below. Please like, share, subscribe. Please let me know what you guys want to hear or watch, so to speak. And I will see you next time. Bye.